All right, let's get started. Um, hello, everybody. I am Glorious Flyer, and today I am going to be making a tutorial on how to make um, a basic DK64 ROM hack. So, ROM hacking has come a long way in the last just couple years, and I really wanted to show off um, a lot of the work of the community in building these hacks and show what can be done um, pretty easily with the state of the current tools. So uh, to start it off, I just wanted to, I guess, show you an example of some stuff that I've made in the last year or two. Um, so let me pull up a video of that. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is the most recent one that I made. Um, I'm just going to play the video and then I'll talk about it a bit. Stupid message. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so that's it. Um, okay, so this is a hack that I made recently, and the um, the new thing um, associated with this is that um, for the first time, we're able to have um, custom collision and custom maps um, in the game of DK64. And the first thing that'll jump out to you is that you know everything is untextured and it's just all these random colors instead, and um, that's because uh, texturing isn't done, but everything else is done. It's fully functional, the collision works, and um, I just wanted to get something out there even though it um, wasn't, you know, 100% complete. And um, it's still just far and above the most advanced um, ROM hacking that we've ever had in DK64. And um, I wanted to show another example of um, what I've done at the end of 2021, which is a different hack, which doesn't really use too much in terms of um, custom assets, but it does um, really take a lot of creative liberties in terms of um, the actual gameplay. Um, it's like a, it's a racing hack. It uses the Creepy Castle uh, racing mini game um, as sort of a, a base for the game. And so anyways, just, you'll understand if you watch. So, um, as you can see, um, 
we can already do some pretty non-trivial things in terms of modifying uh, DK64. Um, you know, even though we're super far away from actually having a, you know a full decomp of the game, and yet we can still do all this. And so I really wanted to make this tutorial to, um, you know, maybe pique some people's interest and you know start growing the community more. There's already a bunch of people who are, you know, somewhat tangentially uh, interested in the stuff that, you know, like me or the people on the uh, randomizer discord are working on. And yeah, I just wanted to get something out there for people to use so that they can get going. Okay, I had a bunch of false starts because of <laughs> my security settings, but I'm going to go ahead and try and download the repository now. All right, finally. See, as you can see, couldn't download virus detected. Well, it's not a virus, but nice try, Windows. Okay, so I'm going to unzip this. Uh, let's see. Extract all. I'm going to just put this on my desktop for now. And, yep. Oh, I'll get rid of this stuff. I'm recording okay so we have our hack base here and the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're going to title it rom and in here you are going to need a dk64 rom and you are just going to drop it straight into here make sure it's called dk64.z64 that's important and then you don't have to think about it from there this is where uh, this is where the new ROM that gets built is going to be put, and this is where your vanilla ROM needs to be, and then that's all you need to know. Okay, and then important instructions at the bottom of this. This is stuff that I've already done, but this will be important for people that are doing this for the first time. Um, you need to go on the internet and install Python, Python 3, and then you are going to need to download um, N64 Chain and then you are also going to need to follow these instructions to get it in your path so that the build tools will then know where it is. Basically, this is the this is the stuff that um, allows the C code to get into custom C code to get into the ROM. And so um, on the repository, you just scroll down and then you'll find these instructions. And then basically all you have to do is then um, go into your environment variables in Windows and then go edit the path and then just Put something like I have here, which is the N64 chain. So that's all you need to do there. And then let's see. I have... Okay, so the first thing we're going to do just to make sure that it's working is we're going to replace our first asset. Um, so if we were to just uh, run build right now, I'm pretty sure it would work. Um, but because we haven't made any modifications, it would just essentially be vanilla DK64 that it spits out on the other end. But just to be sure, let's just try running it. And all I did there was I ran uh, this build batch file right here. And as you can see, there's a bunch of output here, but um, it's sometimes useful for debugging, but in a lot of cases, it's just extraneous information that you don't need to worry about. Okay, so it does look like it succeeded. So if I go into this ROM folder, as you can see, um, it spit out, um, well, importantly, it spit out this uh, new hack that we just built and some other associated files that aren't as important and some debugging information here, um, the stuff that it modified in the ROM, but it shouldn't have modified anything. So uh, we're going to do our first asset replacement. Um, I had the idea to... Um, Replace the logo when you first start the game with uh, this Power Star from Mario 64. So I'm going to go into the bin folder and I'm just going to drop this in here. Uh, it should be a PNG. I'm pretty sure it is. Just going to make sure. Um, no, it's a WebP. So um, let me just go into Paint and make sure that it's a PNG just so that it doesn't do anything funky. Mm -hmm. 
and it's it's fine for these purposes if it's not uh, transparent. Um, okay, so I have that in there, and then um, I'm going to go into this build folder and then open up uh, build.py. This is a really important file um, in the hack, which basically this is where you will define all the files that you're replacing and all the um, map replacements that you're going to make. So you can replace a bunch of files in bulk, like if you want to modify uh, the training grounds map or something and you don't want to load in each individual file separately, you can just load all the associated files with a certain map all at once, like uh, the loading zones, the objects and the locations within the map. You can define all that within one folder and then it will replace it for the entire map. And so that's uh, a neat feature that you have here and we will be taking advantage of that. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put in an entry uh, here to replace the logo. And um, I don't remember how to do it off the top of my head, but I do have it here from a previous hack that I did. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm going to Whoops, and I'm going to make a modification to it. Okay, so I'm just gonna do it just like this. So change the name, uh, uh, that's fine. This is the Nintendo logo that first shows up. And then you wanna leave these as is. Um, these are, this is the location of the, um, the vanilla Nintendo logo in the ROM and we want to replace it with a new file. So um, the name of the file is in bin it's this so whatever you whatever you have it named if you're following along um, you want to put it in here uh, in this source file line and then the texture format should be fine and yeah this looks good so this should in theory um, replace the Nintendo logo when we start up the ROM so I'm going to save that I'm going to go back and run the uh, the build batch file and there should be an entry in here to the thing that I replaced. So yeah, as you can see, if you can see on this line right here, writing bin slash power star model SM64 to ROM. Um, and doesn't give you more information. Oh, no, it does right here. It says, um, see 1494, if you remember that, that was from right here. Um, table 14, entry 94. Um, that's what those signify if you're interested, but that's a little technical. Um, okay, yeah, so it should have spit out the new ROM with the modified logo. Um, yep, 258, that's the new one. So I'm gonna open up um, BizHawk, uh, standard N64 emulator. You can use Project 64 as well. And I'm just going to drag and drop this right into the emulator and it should work. Okay. So we looked it up and it needs to be 192 by 48. So I'm going to resize it to that. 192 by 48. And it's going to look a little stretched out in off center, but that is fine as long as it works. So let's try that. Ah, and there you have it. Okay. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. Yeah, so I was not taking into consideration that the size should have matched the original. So the aspect ratio that it's expecting is 192 pixels horizontally and 48 vertical. So make sure that that is the size of your image file that you are replacing when you do that. But as you can see, we now have a DK64 ROM that is displaying a custom image right out of the gate and if we go a little longer we can see that the game actually runs so that's a good sign that means that the game is stable and everything should work beyond this point if you if you can make it to the dk wrap everything should be fine and there you go okay so we can check that off and 
And okay, and so um, first thing that you might want to do in a hack is you probably want to set the spawn location to not be in training grounds whenever you leave the main menu. So our first goal is going to be changing that. And as a part of that, here, I'm just going to turn the volume down on that. Okay. And as a part of that, um, we're going to want uh, story skip to be on. And, you know, it's useful to just put it on by default, because normally when you start up the game, you have to go into the options menu, then you have to go over and enable it, and then you can enter your file. Because if it's off, it's going to play the intro story, and that's really long, and it will mess up. Uh, anything that you do related to a custom start location. So as you can see, it's off here, and it goes straight into the intro story, which is just a long, like, four-minute cutscene, and so we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually write some custom C code that checks if you're on the main menu, um, checks, um, sets story skip, first of all, and then checks to see um, if it's trying to put you in training grounds, and if so, um, put you somewhere else. So that's just a simple way of thinking about how do I set my spawn location right out of the main menu, because normally the sequence would be either if story skip is off, play, this, play the intro story, but if story skip is on, it would put you in either DK Isles or um, training grounds, depending on uh, how far you've progressed. And so if we're just starting like a whole new hack, it's going to put us in training grounds. So that's going to be the logic that we're going to follow. And so um, we're going to go into the source folder and we're going to look in main.c. So right now there is uh, there's a hook that is running this C function loop uh, every single frame of the game. And any modified C code that we put in here will be run every frame of the game other than, you know, certain periods during loads. But for all intents and purposes, um, this this function is actually being compiled into uh, MIPS assembly and run every single frame by um, by basically just putting a hook in a function that already runs every frame and then just doing a little extra work by running our stuff. So um, what we're going to do, oh, and I should probably elaborate on this point a little further just so you have an idea of what's going on. So if I go into, I think it's main.asm. Yeah, so this is this is assembly code that's actually um, modifying some of the, the vanilla code in the game to actually run, jump to our um, C function. And so if you see, um, there should be something related to the name of that function. Yeah, so as you can see, cfunk loop, that is the label um, that's over here. So um, I'm pretty sure if you change the name of this, you'd have to change it in this main.asm as well. And if you wanted to create another hook to a different location in the code, if you know what you're doing, um, this is where you would do it as well. But Anyway, so basically, this is this is assembly level code that is running, the, or that is yeah, that is uh, modifying the code that is running every single frame, and it's jumping to our um, C function over here. And so from here, we can actually run custom C code using labels that um, we define. So we don't just have to write things in terms of um, memory in the game, we can actually uh, make custom labels and use them and, and give them associated uh, C types and then use them accordingly. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, so if you open up, I think it's symbols. Yeah, so um, there are all these labels in here by default. Um, a lot of these are not gonna be useful, but if you scroll down, here are some of the more useful ones down here, vanilla data. So if I just take one of these as an example, like story skip, this is one that we're going to be using. Um, so there's a there's an instruction in here to define the label story skip as this address. And if you were to go to this address in uh, RAM, 
while the game is running. So what is that address? 74452C. 74452C. If you were to go here into RAM, you can see that it's currently set to zero, which means that story skip is off, which is what we're expecting. Um, and if you want to look at like what the data type of this is, that is actually defined in a separate file. I think it's... Um, where is that defined? Let's see, I'm in it. Right now I'm in symbols, right? Should be objects, right? Nope. Where is it? Oh no, it should be... I think it should be in the include. No, it's not here. It's... Maybe it's vanilla devs. Ah, here we go. Okay, so if we scroll down, we'll see this list should somewhat resemble um, what's in symbols. So here are the instructions to map labels to certain addresses. And then here in this H file, it's actually giving um, a C related type to um, those labels. So if we find story skip, so story skip is um, an S8 type, which stands for um, assigned single byte um, value. Um, you can see right above it, there's a U16, which means unsigned two byte value. Um, you can see above it S32, that's assigned four byte value, um, and so on. Those are those are the types that we um, work with. We, we think in terms of one, two, and four bytes typically, and whether or not they're signed or unsigned. Um, and you can see some of these have um, custom types, you can actually go and you can create a custom C struct. Um, if you if you know this, the, if you know a custom structure is being used in the game, you can actually go and you can define these over in I guess vanilla struct. So a classic example of that would be um, the actor class. That's stuff like enemies and you know your Kong and stuff like that. So if you look at player data. Uh, a lot of this stuff is already labeled. So like, um, let's see. So like your X position, your Y position, your Z position, these are all things that you can access directly out of the uh, player struct. So anyways, so in here we have a, a label story skip. This is the associated um, address with it. Um, over here in vanilla defs.h, um, we have where is it? Extern S8 story skip. So we're able to then go ahead and use this label in our C function. Um, and you don't need to be really concerned about creating custom ones of these. There's a bunch of them already in here that are um, useful. And so um, if someone is just starting out, I would recommend just working with what's already in here because there's a lot of really good stuff already in here. So uh, in our main.c, um, it doesn't really matter where in the game we are. We're always just going to want to make sure story skip is enabled. So I'm just going to straight up say uh, story skip equals one. And no matter where you are, it's going to be setting the story skip global address to enabled. It's either, I'm pretty sure anything that's non-zero would be considered enabled, but I just set it to one because that's what I know works. So if I just say story skip equals one and I save this, I can... Uh, I can build this and then uh, it should have story skip enabled uh, no matter where I am. Uh, I'm not going to build it and go all the way to the menu yet because I want to do a little more first. So I want to check, like I was saying, I want to set the custom spawn location out of the main menu. So we're going to want to run some code if we're on the main menu and we detect that it's trying to send us to training grounds and we want to send we want it to send us somewhere else. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the current map, that's another label out of here, uh, if you're curious, current map, its type is, should be like a unsigned 16. Well, S32, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. It, 
it works. Okay, and we want to check if we're on the main menu. And so how do we know if we're on the main menu? Well, the current map um, has a bunch of associated values. So if I go to, um, here, here's another repository that's gonna be useful. It's gonna have a lot of really useful DK64 related information. So if I type in training grounds into, right now I'm in uh, the script hawk repository in the game subfolder in dk64.lib. There's a bunch of stuff in here and I'm going to be actually using the, D, uh, the script hawk, script, hawk um, script to be doing stuff later to make some custom files. So if I go and type train grounds, I will find this list of all the maps and their associated map values. So as you can see, 170 is here. So this is 171, 172, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 176 is training grounds. Uh, and okay, so I'm going to make a note of that. Training grounds equals 176, which also equals 0xb0 if you're in hexadecimal. And then I'm going to check what is the main menu. It should be 80, if I remember correctly. Yep, 80. Main menu equals 80, which equals 0x50. So I want to say if the current map is equal to uh, the main menu, so 80, and you can do this in hexadecimal or in decimal, then I want to also check if the destination map, so where it's trying to send me, I want to check if it's trying to send me to uh, training grounds. Or, you know, I don't even really need to check this. I could just always have it set a destination to where I want to go. I can just straight up say uh, destination map equals, and then let's pick somewhere to go. So how about we go to Hideout Helm Lobby, 170, okay. So I'm going to set the destination, destination map to 170 and the destination exit to zero. So what this does is it basically says there, there's a value in RAM that says, where am I going? On a map transition, where am I going to end up? So I'm setting that to hideout home lobby. And the destination exit is, where within the map is it going to place me? And the default entrance is zero. So I'm just going to set these two values. So this basically should do, um, this basically should do what I'm trying to accomplish. So I'm just going to go ahead and build this and uh, and do a little testing just to make sure it works. Let's see. Oh, it might be called something. Yeah, it's just dest, sorry. Dest map and dest exit. Whoops. But as you can see, when you run the build tool, if there's an error in your C code, it will spit out a bunch of warnings at you and it'll tell you what's wrong with it. So that built successfully, and now I'm going to boot it up in BizHawk. So it should have the custom logo still. There we go. And then once we get through all the startup, We have to get past the wrap and the DKTV. And there are ways to modify it so that you skip all this intro stuff, but it's a little, a little more advanced, so I'm not quite ready to uh, get into that sort of thing yet. But um, first thing I want to do is I want to check that uh, story skip is on by default. I haven't changed it, so it should just be on when I scroll over to it. Yep, story skip is on. Normally, it, by default, it's off, so you can see that it, uh, the custom code is already working. And we're in the main menu right now, so it should every frame be setting our destination map to uh, 
I don't have lobby. And so whenever I, whenever I enter a file, it's going to use that destination value to set my new map. So whenever I hit A on this to start a new file, StoryScape is off, so it should just set, send me straight to Idaho Lobby. Ah, and look, there you go. We did it. Okay. So we have our first minor success. So we set StoryScape. Sorry, I have a little checklist over here just to make sure I'm keeping on track. So, um, something that I want to do is um, if I look in the game, we're in a very basic state. Um, the, none of the Kongs are unlocked. Um, there's nothing we can really do from here except leave or we could probably make it over to that Kasplat. But um, one of the things I want to do is I want the all the Kongs to just be unlocked by default. I feel like that would be um, a nice feature to have. So I'm going to go to some code that I had written previously, and I'm just going to copy it because it's easier. These, uh, this, um, this array right here is all the flag values for whether or not a Kong is unlocked. So if I uh, put this in my C code, and you can just you can just copy this straight to your code. Um, this flag is associated with DK being unlocked. This flag is associated with Diddy being unlocked, etc. And then there should just be a uh, default function already in, I think, lib.c that just sets a flag. Yep, there's there's stuff already associated with um, setting a flag. And so what I don't remember is if it's a permanent, a global, or a temporary flag. I think it should be a permanent flag. But just to make sure, I'm going to see how I did it before. Yep, so I just I just wrote this quick little C function that just unlocks the Kongs. I'm just going to copy it over here, and I can explain it a little bit. So outside of C func loop, I'm going to have another function that's just called unlock Kongs. And what it does is it's just a for loop that goes over this array, and it um, for each one of these flags, it runs the set flag function that's in uh, lib.c, and it just runs it. And this is this is one of the things that it's already in there by default. Um, you don't have to worry about finding where this, this, this is actually like a vanilla function from the game. You don't have to worry at all about finding this sort of thing. You can just go ahead and use it. It's already prepackaged with the, um, with the build tools. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, within this, no, I'm going to do it outside of this for loop just because I want to make sure the Kongs are unlocked within the file. I'm just going to call unlock Kongs out here. And you know, this is kind of not good practice. If you think about it, um, setting five different flags every single frame when you only need to set it one time, it's probably not the best idea. But you, <clears throat> you probably have to do some additional logic to figure out how I get it to check that I'm within my file and the flags are not already set and that I should only be setting them the first time. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to have this run every single time. So this should unlock all the columns. And then I want to do something um, a little different. This is not going to be custom C code. This is actually going to be modifying some of the custom files um, within like the map files that I was talking about earlier. So if you remember uh, in build.py, there's this map replacement section. And so I'm going to go into one of these custom map folders and just show you what I'm talking about. Um, but first, the first thing you have to do is you have to do, you want to run um, extract maps. That's something that's prepackaged with it. And I think it requires that you already have um, a ROM in the ROM folder. But let's just go ahead and run this. And what this does is it basically just uh, it just dumps all of the map files from the game and gives them their associated labels. So if I look in, um, let's see, Hideout Helm is 170, Hideout Helm Lobby is 170. So if I look in here, these are all the associated map files. So there's, um, so like there's loading zones that are associated with this map. There are 
there's the setup file, which is like the object placement um, throughout the map. And then there's like walls and floors and geometry, and there's a bunch of stuff. You can see all the stuff that's associated with this map. And so what I want to do, the first thing I want to do is I want to modify the loading zones that are um, associated with this um, with this map. So what I want, first thing I want to do is I want to create a copy of this so that the original one is there. You can modify it in place if you want, but um, I would prefer just to have a copy of it. And I'm just going to call this uh, map zero helm lobby. So I just copied it over here. And then um, over here in my map replacements, I'm going to create an entry for this, uh, this test map. So um, I'm going to give it a name. Um, I'm just going to call it helm lobby. The map index is the same index we were using before, 170. And the map folder is this, uh, the name of this directory that I just created. So it's map zero dash helm lobby. And then I save that and then build.py is good. Now what it's gonna do is it's going to replace with all the known map files, it's going to look through this directory and it's gonna go ahead and replace um, all of them from here. Um, I don't necessarily want it to do that, so you can actually just only include the ones that you want to replace and then leave all the others as vanilla. Um, these are vanilla, so it would be fine if I replaced them, but um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to remove them. And then what I want to do is um, I want to open up this uh, loading zones JSON file. And as you can see, there are two entries in here. Um, the, you can see the top one is here, and the bottom one is here. These these are the two loading zones that are in the map. So if you go into the game, you can see um, the one loading zone is this one over here to leave, and then there's one loading zone across the way to get in, into Hideout Helm. So that makes sense that there are two entries here. So um, I want to modify... Um, I want to modify, let's see, this loading zone here, and I want to have it send me to DK's house. Um, this is just an example, doesn't really have to make sense with something you'd want to do, but um, this is just what I'm going to have it do. So first I want to figure out um, which of these two loading zones is the one that I want to modify. And it looks like this one, because you can see the destination map name is already filled in here, and it's set to DK Isles Overworld. Which makes sense. Um, so, and map 34 is uh, DK Isles. I just know that off the top of my head. So, I wanted to have it send us to DK's house. And so I want to figure out what is DK's house number. DK's house is uh, 171. And uh, 171 in hex. Let me just use a little hex calculator. Let's see. Oh my god. Stupid ads. 171 is AB. I don't think I actually even need the hexadecimal. I think I can just do it in... Yeah, I can just actually do it in decimal here. So, um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to modify the destination map to 171 and the destination exit to 0, which, if you remember, is the default. And everything else about it, I can leave the same. I want it to behave exactly the same. I just want to change where it sends us. So I'm going to save this. And this should be good. And we already set the entry in build.py. So I'm just going to go out here and I'm going to run build. And let's see. That should just be a warning, right? Yeah, that is a warning. Okay, I remember what's wrong. Um, in my... C file, I did not declare the function up here, so I just need to put a declaration up here so it knows about it beforehand. I think it would have compiled anyway, but there we go. That's fine. Okay, so now I'm going to open up my new ROM. custom image is still there. So 
so we know we're in the right ROM, we're not in the vanilla one. So you got to get through DKTV and then we'll be on the menu. And then I should just be able to go straight into the file because story skip will be set and it'll send you to Helm Lobby. Okay, we're in Helm Lobby. And now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the tag barrel. And would you look at that? All the comms are unlocked. Exactly like I wanted. And now this loading zone should also be modified. So if I leave here, this should send me to DK's house. Wow, would you look at that? It's a little glitchy, but um, it works. <laughs> um, this is like um, the reason I spawned in that corner and this DK is here is um, I don't actually know why that happens, but I think it has to do with just the way that I spawned in. I, I couldn't really tell you. Maybe I didn't go through the default entrance, so something weird is going on there, but that's fine. Okay, <laughs> but anyways, um, the last thing I wanted to do is I wanted to um, make it so that there's a training barrel um, in this house. Um, that's going to be the last thing I'm going to do in this tutorial. <clears throat> and then anything more advanced beyond that can be for a future video, or you can always join the um, DK64 ROM hacking Discord and um, ask questions there. There will always be people there to answer your questions. So um, what I'm going to do in order to find out um, the position at which I'm able to spawn this uh, tag barrel is I'm going to open up Script Talk. If you remember, I used Script Talk earlier for information. It's also this really nice uh, tool in which um, it has a bunch of really cool features. Like it can warp you to any map. Um, it can give you infinites. It can unlock moves and Kongs, set flags. Um, but also very importantly, as you can see, there's an on-screen display where it tells me, um, especially right here, the X, Y, and Z position of where I'm at. And so that's really useful. That's if you're wanting to figure out like where you want to spawn something in the game, um, it's really easy to just put your character model there and then you can look at the on-screen display and then just be like, okay, this is where I want my new object to spawn in. So um, I'm going to define a new map replacement in build.py. I think it's this one. Yep. And then I'm going to make a new entry here for DK's house. So I can, this is also, I can spawn in a tag barrel into DK's house, just to make that clear. So DK's house, and DK's house is 171. Uh, that's just a coincidence. I didn't realize they were uh, sequential. And um, I'm going to make a new folder. Oops. I'm going to make a new folder for these map files. Map 1, DK's house. And in it, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to take some default stuff. Um, let me see if there's anything in the setup by default. If so, I, I'll just copy it. Okay, yeah, so there is a, yep, so there's Model 2 stuff and there's um, Actor stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this to its new location. And I don't need this uh, bin file. I can just use the setup file or the JSON. So I'm going to copy that into here. And then I'm going to make sure that this is updated accordingly. DK's house. Okay, save that. I'm going to open up this JSON. Okay. And so a tag barrel is an actor. This is just something that you need to know. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention this, but um, the script talk, um, Lewis script works by detecting a specific game type. And if you're using a 
ROM hack, like a modified ROM that you create, um, it's not going to recognize it. So something that you want to do is you want to go into this file, um, scripttalk.lua, and near the top of the file, you're going to want to find this force module entry, and you're going to set um, enabled equals true, and name equals games.dk64. Um, and then it should treat ROMs that it doesn't recognize as DK64. That's why um, my modified ROM, DK64 new hack dev, is being recognized as DK64, just so you know. Okay. Um, and so back in DK64.lua, uh, I'm going to search for uh, tag barrel. And I'm, I'm going to find a big actor list. Yep, these are. This isn't under the actor types, and tag barrel is 98. So, uh, what I need to do is I need to change, I guess it's this behavior here. I'm going to change the exposition, and I'm going to change the behavior so that it uh, turns into a tag barrel rather than the boombox. Let me just make sure that... So, boom, boombox is 135. Um, which is 16 off of that. So yeah, something that you need to know is you need to actually, if you're using the numbers in this list, you need to actually subtract uh, 16 because the list actually starts, stuff that you can spot in actually starts um, right here. So you need to subtract 16 and cannon barrel is one. That's just uh, one of those oddities that you have to learn. So um, if we're going to be using tag barrel, we need to subtract 16 from this, and that is going to be 82. So I'm going to change this to 82. Uh, the name doesn't really matter as far as I'm aware, but I'm going to name it appropriately. And then I'm going to look in game. I have the um, X, Y, and Z value that I want to use, um, 394. Three ninety four. Um, what are the other ones? Ninety five and four fifty. You can use decimal precision if you want, but I'm not going to. And you can you can modify other aspects of it as well if you want. Uh, you know, just for this example, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say the scale is one point five instead of one. And so if I save this. This is in the DK, DK's house um, custom folder. Now what should happen is if I run the build script, it should take this JSON and it should generate a binary file and then it should use that binary file um, as the map replacement. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the build script and just confirm that it's doing that appropriately. Yep, see it generated this file and this is what it's actually replacing with. And if you open it up in a hex editor, you can see um, this is like what the custom file actually looks like, but it's a lot more readable as a JSON. So that's why we have some of these nice little features like that. Um, and so if I look here, it looks like, um, yeah, it looks like it was successful. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. And this should be the goal that I set out to accomplish at the start which is a ROM that replaces this, sets story skip in the menu, uh, spawns you into hideout home lobby, unlocks all the Kongs, uh, creates a, or modifies a loading zone to send you to DK's house, and then once you're in DK's house, it has a tag barrel on it. And that's doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, just a simple example that um, I thought people could use. <laughs> So once we get through DKTV, we should be on the menu. And story skip should be on. And yep, I'm in Helm Lobby. No, uh, no intro story. All the Kongs are unlocked. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn myself into tiny just because. Okay, when I go through this loading zone, and I should be in DK's house, and in DK's house, there should be a tag barrel. 
Yep, and it's a big tiger barrel. Look at that. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm going to leave it with that. Um, this is the end of the video. Um, for more for more advanced ROM hacking than this, um, I showed some examples at the start um, of you know what you can do with this sort of build tool. Um, you know the, the stuff that I made took you know months of effort, and so um, you should expect that with enough you know time and effort, uh, you can create some you know things that are far and above uh, better than the example that I just did here. But still, this should be enough to get um, people started. And um, I want to just make sure people know that in the description of this video, there should be a link to the Discord. And if you join, there are going to be um, tutorials and resources and more than enough people who are willing to take out time of their day to um, answer any questions that you have and uh, help you along your ROM hacking journey. So um, with that, I'll leave it there. And uh, thank you for watching.